Sure, great. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Rich Nicholson. I'm um, the owner of R and R Property Inspection. I am a Ohio licensed and internationally certified home inspector. I'm also licensed to do radon testing, wood destroying insect inspections, and certified for mold testing. Um, so what I'm going to do today is kind of just walk you through a presentation on what is a home inspection, what do you expect, what should you expect when you have your uh, home inspection, some of the things, normal things that you'll see in a home inspection as far as reporting um, and defects. Um, you know, and then feel free to jump in and ask any questions along the way. And I will get started. So I'm going to share my screen here. And if you guys just let me know whether you can see it okay. Can everybody see my slides up on the screen? Share. You good? Okay, very good. <clears throat> so this is, um, so they've asked me to kind of do this just from a, here's my first deal. I know you, you and um, realtors, this, you're new to the business. So congratulations on uh, either getting your license or working on getting your license. Um, and let me, uh, so we're gonna start with what is a home inspection? And can you can you hear me okay? Can everybody hear me okay? Okay, um, so what is a home inspection? Let me see if I can get rid of this here. Okay, uh, pretty much a home inspection is an objective, visual, non-invasive examination of the physical structure and systems of the house from roof to foundation. So one thing to understand is, you know, it's what we can see. It's, you know, we can't see behind walls. Uh, we can't see areas of the attic that are, are not accessible. Uh, we can't see duct work behind walls or wiring in the walls. So it's, it's pretty much whatever we can see. That's why it's important for you when you work with your clients um, and, and, you know, whether you're uh, representing the buyer or the seller, you, you want to make sure that all the major components are accessible. So if there's an attic that, and it's in a access panels in a closet, you want to have your clients clean that out so that we can get in there and go up and, and look at the attic. And this way we have the opportunity to get up there, it's included in the report and the buyer doesn't have to worry about, oh, I don't, you know, that's an unknown to me. And, uh, you know, this way we can get it. Same thing with electrical panels. I just had an inspection the other day where there was a, a washer and dryer sitting right in front of the main electrical box. We don't move that, okay? so. You know, I was able to open the box, look at it, but I wasn't able to pull the panel off and see if there was any sort of wiring defects like double taps or, or evidence of burned wires or anything like that. So um, it's very important that you work with your clients to make sure that these components are visible and accessible if you can. Um, on average, a single family home inspection usually takes two to four hours to complete. Uh, and then this is heavily dependent on the size and condition of the home. Um, so the way it normally takes, it normally takes me about uh, an hour and a half to two hours on the inside, and then, you know, 45 minutes to an hour on the outside. So that gives you kind of a, a idea how to do it. I like to do it so that in order to save both the, the, the realtor's time and the client's time, I like to schedule it so that I get there first, work on the exterior portion of the inspection, um, you know, kind of go through all of my work outside, have them come an hour or so later, and then we go jump into the interior inspection. And before we jump into the interior inspection, I'll kind of give my pitch to them about what is a home inspection, what what they're gonna get from me, what I look for, um, and then I'll give them an update that, okay, this is what I found outside and we'll walk around the house and I'll show them, you know, anything I found. And this way it kind of, you know, um, limits their, their commitment and from just potentially sitting around. Um, okay, after the inspection process, I'll, I'll send out uh, an inspection report often within 28 to 24 to 48 hours. Mine is 24 hours. Some, some, um, 
home inspectors will send the report out shortly after the home inspection. I, I personally like to make, go through my entire report a few times um, and make sure that everything is covered and I didn't miss anything. And um, so I'll send it out within 24 hours of when the inspection is completed. Um, what does a home inspection report include? Okay, a standard home inspections report, condition of the home's heating system, central air conditioning system, temperature permitting. You know, right now we're kind of in a quasi, we might be able to turn the air conditioning on or not, depending on how cold the temperature is outside. Uh, the standard is usually uh, 60 to 65 degrees. Um, you know, anything below that, anything really below 65, you know, 60 degrees, depending on who, you know, there's two different standards there, but, um, you know, we don't want to turn that on if it's 50 degrees outside because it might damage the compressor. Um, interior plumbing system, electrical system, roof attic, and visible insulation. Again, I said visible. I mean, yeah, visible. We can't see behind walls, uh, walls, ceilings, floors, windows, and doors, foundation, basement, and structural components. And obviously, if there's a garage, you know, the garage is included. Um, and, it, you know, potential exceptions, and we'll usually um, include these in the report as an inspection restriction or um, a limitation. Um, so if there's locked doors, um, unsafe conditions, so severely steep roofs, poor structural integrity, um, you know, we'll, like I was explaining before with the electrical panel where, you know, I could not safely get there and, and get that panel off. Those will be noted in the report and, and as exceptions. Um, so Ohio and internationally, Ohio, as I'm sure you're aware, has, has was working on implementing um, the fact that standards of practice and licensing for home inspectors in Ohio. So I'm a Ohio licensed home inspector and do it ad, adhere by the Ohio um, standard of ethics, uh, code of ethics and standards of practice. And I'm also internationally certified. And, those standards of practice and code of ethics for both Ohio and Internacia are, are relatively similar. Um, and those, those will be defined in, in the report that I, each section of the report, what the standards of practice are. Um, okay, so why is a home inspection needed? So, you know, to minimize surprises, right? So if you're buying a home, which is, is really probably a person's single largest investment um, that you'll ever make, uh, you know, to try to make sure that you walking in with your eyes open and understand truly it is what you're buying. And if there are any sort of um, defects um, or you know, just a lot of deferred maintenance, um, you know, that'll, I include that in my report. Um, to identify um, need for major repairs or builder oversights. And, and again, as well as the need for maintenance to keep it in good shape. Um, through the home inspection process, um, home, buyer, bu home buyers will have a better understanding about the prospective house um, and allow them to make that decision with confidence. Um, now, if a home is to sell their home, a home inspection can give them the opportunity to make repairs and put the house in better selling condition. So, so you know, we, we pretty much will, we, we, we so a home inspection is not necessarily just for the buyer. If a seller wants to kind of to have somebody come in and go through that inspection process before they put the house on the market to see what the extent of their potential repairs or if they have an issue where, you know, they want to take care of it before it gets put on the market um, so it doesn't break a deal, there's an opportunity there. So we, we do them both for sellers and buyers. Okay, can a home inspection, can a home fail an inspection? And the quick, the short part of the answer is no. There is no passing fail grade. Um, it's up to whatever that person who's buying the home, you know, what their, what their um, contingencies are. Uh, while we're really doing is reporting the current condition of the home. Um, so it's our examination and objective assessment of the current condition of a house. 
It's not an appraisal, so we don't determine the home's market value. Obviously, the appraisers do that. And it's not a municipal inspection, so a point of sale inspection done by the city. We are not code inspectors. We don't, we don't report on code. We report on standards. That's in our standards of practice. Um, and so, you know, most home inspectors won't use code references in the reports um, because we're not code inspectors. Um, so it is not a pass or fail. Uh, with a home inspection, we will describe the physical condition of the home, indicate what components and systems may need repair, indicate what components and systems may need replacement, indicate what components and systems may need further evaluation by a reputable qualified licensed contractor or handyman or arborist or, you know, whatever it is. Um, you know, home inspectors come from um, different backgrounds. And so um, what we'll do is we'll call out, we'll call out things that need repair replacement or, you know, like I'm not a structural engineer. So if I see, uh, structural concerns in the basement, uh, I will refer you or recommend that you um, get another opinion from a foundation contractor or a structural engineer if it's really the structural components of the house. So that's what you'll see. Or if, if those may, if those problems with the electrical panel where he came up and say, hey, uh, I see a number of issues with your electrical panel, you should have a, a licensed electrician come in and take a look at it. And again, these are recommendations uh, to, to the buyers or the, my client, whoever it is. Um, okay, what if an inspection report reveals problems? No house is perfect. And especially in the areas, the Heights areas and Cleveland area, there's a lot of older homes and all, you know, no matter how much how well somebody has taken care of their house, there's always something to do with a home. And some people take care of their house as far as uh, preventative maintenance and maintaining their house than, than others do. So, you know, it's just different degrees. Um, so what we'll do is we'll look at the, identify the different issues. And I, I basically report them into three different categories. One is, hey, here's, this is just normal maintenance here. You know, uh, here, a second category would be, you know, I got a um, concern here um, that you need to get this looked at. It's something that's has failed um, or in the process of failing, or it may be that, you know, your heating system is 40 years old and it has a, um, you know, an expected estimated useful life of 25 years. You know, I'll just put in the report, hey, it's operating today but you, you just should know that this has exceeded its estimated lifetime um, in a 45 years, or it may, not, it may stop working tomorrow. And it's not just anything for a 45-year-old furnace, it's just an example, but you know, any, any of those components, we go in there and inspect them, they could be operating just fine, and the next day a water tank springs a leak or in other words, we can't see inside that tank. The inspection is really for that moment in time that we're there. Um, and our goal is to have the clients have a deeper understanding of their prospective home so that they can make a sound decision and continue their home buying process. Um, you know, our role is not to tell the clients that they should buy or a house or not, just, but it's to report on our observations and help clients understand the full cost of ownership. So, you know, so, if, so, that, so they understand that, Hey, you know what? your furnace is broken, you're going to need to put a new furnace in, or your, your electrical panel is, is in poor shape, you may need to get a new, you, you should get a new electrical panel, or the driveway is all cracked up. You know, people just need to understand, you know, what it is um, that's out there, and they can factor that into the overall price or whether they want to buy the house or not. Um, and obviously, you guys know this, but the buyer's option is, is they can either walk away or they can negotiate with the seller or make the repairs themselves. Um, so what really matters in a home inspection? Now I have a, a video here and I don't, I wasn't very successful showing it last time. So I'm gonna pull it up in a separate window and 
if you can't hear it, um, let me know and I will skip it and then we'll move on. Um, it's just a, it's a video from InterNACHI uh, that kind of, kind of goes over kind of what I'm going over, but, you know, from a different perspective. Um, so let me, let me pull up another window here. Let's see. Can you hear this or no? Can you guys see or hear that or no? No? Okay, let me, uh, you are sharing your screen. Okay, so I'm gonna skip over that. All right, and it'll be in the presentation. It'll be in a presentation that I email out to you all. Okay, and you can, if you wanna watch it, you can, you can, you can do it. Um, I don't know why I have problems. I can hear it just fine. So let me just double check here. Can you can you actually see the, the screen for the video or no? You can't see the screen either? Okay, hold on. Let me I'm not sharing. Let's see. Let me stop the share. Let me go back up here. Share screen. Share. Let's try one more time here. Can you hear that? No? Okay. All right. Okay, let me get back into the presentation. Sorry about that. I'll skip through that. And let's share screen. Inspection. Can you see uh, getting ready for a home inspection screen? Okay, beautiful. <clears throat> okay, so and I, I touched on this a little bit earlier to talk in terms of trying to make sure that you're working with your clients um, or your seller or the seller's agent to make sure that their house is ready for a home inspection. Um, and beforehand, you know, you can look for obvious areas that need repair uh, to review the age of the seller's furnace, the AC compressor, water heater, roof, and finding what upgrades have been made. And I'll send out to you in an email after this, once I get all your emails, I'll send out to you, we'll include a link to um, a document that kind of gives the estimated useful life of all the major components of a house so that you can have access to that and say, hey, you know, you know, ultimately we're gonna report on it, but it might be helpful for you to know before you put an offer on or, or whatever that, you know, the furnace is X amount of years old or whatever. But I know you a lot of times you just rely on the uh, seller to, to disclose that information. Um, see all right so so getting ready for an inspection so this is where i talked about providing open access to areas and systems that need to be checked so you know that's electrical panel the furnace the attic, access to the attic um, access to water heaters um, you know anything like that uh, some pumps you know people have a lot of stuff put around the perimeter of their walls especially in the basement uh, you know, that's a kind of a area that we really want to have a make sure that we have a very good look at. Now, if the basement is finished, then obviously we can't see the underlying walls behind the wall coverings. And that's going to be an inspection limitation, which we'll, we'll put in our report also. But on the, un, on the unfinished portion of the basement, um, you know, if there 
is a bunch of shelves against the wall, you know, anything, anything the um, seller can do to help us see the walls um, would be beneficial. And a lot of times I think the sellers may not want us to see the walls. Um, I also run into a lot of situations where the light bulbs are out throughout the house, especially in the basement. So it would be helpful if, you know, people put light bulbs, you know, replace light bulbs and make sure they all work because what we get, when we end up going through and we don't know whether it's electrical problem with whether there's an electrical wiring problem or there's the light bulbs out. Um, so it's certainly helpful if they put light bulbs in that we know that there's not an electrical problem there. The light bulb, uh, you know, it's working and we can move on. Um, check that doors and cabinets are functioning property. Um, you know, that's kind of a no brainer. Um, put in a fresh uh, furnace uh, air filter. Uh, turn on all pilots, pilot lights and utilities to make sure all the utilities are on. We, I will not turn on pilot lights. You know, the pilot lights need to be running. So I'm not going to ignite anything in a home. Um, we use normal operating controls. So obviously we'll go to a thermostat, which controls the furnace and controls the air conditioning. Um, and we'll turn the furnace on by using the thermostat, which is the normal operating control. Um, fireplace, if you have a fireplace and it has a gas fireplace insert and there's a pilot light there and there's a normal operating control to have a knob or remote control, we will operate that. But if it's, you know, you know, you know, you need to light a gas fireplace with a, uh, you know, igniter, uh, manual igniter, manually, that's outside the scope of what we do. Um, so, um, the other thing too would be is make sure that electrical panels are properly labeled. So the main electrical panel where all the breakers are, uh, it would be helpful if, you know, they properly labeled all, all those breakers because we're going to put that in our report if they're not properly labeled. Um, and then take care of any bug, bug problems. Um, you know, last thing you want to have is, you know, bugs, um, flying around in, into walls or bees flying into walls. Um, if you can get, get it taken care of by having an exterminator come out and take care of all that stuff before that um, happens, before the inspection occurs. Um, and this is what I was referring to earlier about sellers may want to pay for a pre-listing inspection. It gives me the opportunity to collect cost estimates for repairs and determine whether they want to pay for fixes or lower their asking price. Or, or do we neither, um, but it can prevent last minute setbacks. And I know, I know the market nowadays is, you know, houses are going so fast and you have multiples going. Um, so that's not necessarily the climate we're in today. Um, but, you know, it's just food for thought. Now what I'd like to do is cover some big ticket items. Um, Okay, so the big ticket items to start with structural roof. Um, so structural meaning uh, the foundation, roof, the chimney, uh, and aged roofs. So, you know, where obviously a foundation is a big ticket item if it's got cracking in it. It's got evidence of water penetration, active leaking, uh, any signs of bowing. Um, chimney obviously leaks uh looking at the looking at the shingles if they're torn ripped um, have a bunch of organic growth growing on them that kind of stuff or you can just see the granules are all gone and, and you're sh showing signs of delamination um, next one would be electrical uh, unsafe electrical panels so you have you know if, few different panels which are industry-wide um, known to cause uh, electrical issues. Um, so Federal Pacific and the Zinzer um, panels. Um, knob and tube wiring and aluminum wiring. So knob and tube wiring in itself is just an older electrical, older wiring. Um, and aluminum wiring back I think in the 70s was an issue where they uh, uh, they stopped using it during that period of time because it would expand and contract and get loose and cause um, 
um, uh, fires, uh, arcing and, and that kind of stuff. And around this area, around the Heights area, you know, there's going to be a lot of homes that were built in the 30s, 20s, 40s that have knob and tube wiring. Um, it's just an older wiring that's, you know, it's because it's old, it's susceptible um, to um, the, wiring, the wiring getting brittle. Um, the standard is Romax wire now, nowadays. Um, my house, my house I, lived in, I lived in University Heights for 24 years. And when I sold my house, I, um, you know, I, it was built in 1933 and it had a Federal Pacific breaker with a panel with uh, stab lock breakers, which is one of the panels that, you, you know, they recommend that you have a reputable licensed electrician evaluate it and replace it. Um, so I had mine done before I actually put my house on the market because I did not want that to be a deterrent to a potential buyer. Okay, from a mechanical aspect, you got your big ticket items are your furnace and your AC, um, water heater, major appliances, obviously your fridge, they're, they're, they're very technical nowadays and advanced and so you got your refrigerators. Um, ventilation is basically like your roof vents and any sort of, um, ventilation from the bathrooms, kitchens, and roof. From an exterior perspective, you have your driveways, uh, walkways, patios, and decks. Those are those are the bigger ticket items. Um, wood destroy and insects, obviously, if you have those in your house and they've done uh, some significant damage, then, you know, you're talking about, you know, replacing, uh, the doing some significant repairs. Um, you know, it could be that you have to replace your sill plate in certain areas or whatever, which would require jacking up the house. Um, carpenter ants and bees. So, so those are the ones that are, are out there. Um, you just need to be aware of them. Uh, buried oil tanks. Uh, obviously, if those are under the ground and the house used to burn oil, and they're still in the backyard, they're probably corroded, and then you got to get the EPA involved in that and then get them, get them uh, dug up, taken out. So those are, again, big ticket items. And then mold, mold can be a big ticket item if you have um, mold in the house, extensive mold. Uh, some of the mold is, I mean, mold is everywhere. It's, I mean, it's outside, it's in the air, it's, it's in the room you're in right now. Uh, it just talks, it's really when it gets into elevated concentrations or if it is, um, you know, detrimental to your health. Certain molds are more detrimental to your health than, than others. Um, and obviously people, especially for people who have allergies. Um, so those are the big ticket items. Um, most common problems that we see in a home inspection. Um, so here we're talking about foundations, okay? So we talked about before there's, um, Foundations are a big ticket item, which you'll see because this is, you know, obviously somebody's built uh, a area, livable area under underneath the ground. So you have the forces of the ground and hydrostatic pressure from water and the ground um, pushing pushing on on the foundation walls, and then obviously the weight of the house and the structure above it pushing down on it. So what you'll you'll see is different cracks. You'll see like, you know, this is this is vertical cracking with a little bit of step cracks here. This is a horizontal crack, hairline crack. So, you know, here you got horizontal cracks, vertical cracks, step cracks, shear cracks. Then you have like floor cracks. The floor in itself is not really a structural component of the house. I mean, those footers underneath these, these walls. Um, but obviously if the floor is correctly and that's cracking that's some sort of um, either heaving and thawing, you know, going on, which you probably have that more if it was, uh, there was no basement and it was above the frost line. Below the frost line, that could be hydrostatic underneath there or settlement of the soil underneath there. <clears throat> um, so, so you guys know, right, the horizontal cracks right here, 
those are more of an indication of structural failure than these vertical or step cracks. Um, I mean, obviously step cracks, they're breaking along, they're breaking along the mortar joints. Um, but, you know, horizontal cracks are usually a result of uh, pressure from the outside. And if you have horizontal cracks along with bowing of the wall, which means the wall is kind of pushing in a little bit, uh, that's a significant issue and that needs to be, you know, that wall may need to be replaced uh, or, or it could just be that it just needs to be sealed. Normally, if it's got some bowing on it, that's a structural problem. If you got a horizontal crack and it's less than an eighth of an inch or less, um, you know, and the house is two years old, that's one thing. If the house is uh, 60 years old and that's what the crack is, may not be as big of a deal, right? Because, you know, it's been there, probably been there for a while. So those you can, you can fill. Um, but if it's got any sort of bowing, th those, those are definitely problems. Vertical cracking is more due to settlement. And, you know, if it happens over in the corner, what you see in a house, if you look in the corners, which is normally where the downspouts drain, that's where you're going to see your water problems. So if you'll see any sort of efflorescence or you see any sort of mildew or mold down there or any sort of water leakage, more than likely that's because the downspouts are draining at the foundation and they're not, you know, doesn't have downspout extenders carrying the water away. Or your, if it's going into um, your drain tile, it could be that that's clogged and it's just sitting against the foundation of your wall. Um, so those vertical and step cracks are not as severe as horizontal cracks. Um, those are just kind of a guideline I wanted to share with you, those different degrees. And obviously if the walls had movement in or, you know, specifically in or out, uh, that's a significant issue. If cracks are hairline cracks or an eighth an inch or less, um, you know, if they're hairline, court, you can put a dime in them, whatever, those will more than likely, you know, you fill those with an expandable sealant um, and monitor those. Okay, we'll get into electrical systems. We're going to talk about double taps. So that's where there are right over here two wires on one lug that is meant for only one lug. Some of these breakers, they're made for two wires and that's okay. You see one wire coming in here, you'll see one wire coming on there, but you won't see them both on the same screw. So we'll call those out as, um, you know, a defect. Um, missing GFCI protection, um, incorrect wiring, uh, de defective and obsolete panels. So those are what you normally see. What you also see in the older homes is you see uh, an older home will more than likely those two wire system, the knob and tube is a two wire system, right? So there's a neutral and a hot. And then there is a, um, with the modern, more modern wiring systems, those three wires. So there's neutral, hot and ground. Um, and what people tried, so in those older systems, people have replaced two prong outlets, right? Because there's two wires, so there's only two prongs there with uh, three prong outlets. So that third, that round hole is for the equipment ground. They replace two prong outlets with a three prong outlet just because they want to be able to plug their modern day stuff into it. And that um, theoretically is going to be called out. We're going to call that out as, you know, it's represented by putting that three prong outlet in there, you're representing to people that it is grounded. Um, and so we'll call that out and say either you need to put a two prong outlet back in there or you should have an electrician ground it if you're gonna keep the three prongs in there. Um, but again, these are recommendations uh, to you. Um, like not actually to you, but to your, your client and my client. Okay, let's talk about roof systems. So flashing drainage, missing damaged shingles, ventilation. As you guys probably know, the, one of the biggest problems with the home and enemies of the home is water. Water getting into the house causes all kinds of problems. It causes uh, moisture 
buildup, which can lead to mold. Um, you know, it, it damages your plaster, your drywall. Um, it's just it's a bad thing. Um, so that's why you see a lot of us calling out, you know, what may look like something small, you know, those nails, nails uh, in the shingles that aren't covered up or flashing is raised. Um, you know, you say that's no big deal. But, you know, we call it out because you want to you want to get it and cover it up because, you know, that can lead to a large amount of water coming there over a period of time. So here are some stuff, you know, so here we got ripped shingles, the shingles ripped off. Here's the flashing for the chimney. You can see at the top here that those gaps in it, so water gets down there, run down along the chimney. You know, the wood gets wet, the chimp, the bricks get wet, they spall. Uh, same thing here um, on the eve of a house, you know, the trim is missing, the aluminum or um, vinyl siding or aluminum trim is missing. So they got bare wood here. So that just makes it susceptible to wood rot, um, wood destroying insects. Um, next one is groundwater drainage and air infiltration. So incorrect drainage due to negative grading, improperly installed or missing gutters and downspouts. So <clears throat> what, we're, what you'll see a lot of times is these gutters are terminating on downspouts are terminating onto the roof and then they let it run on the roof down to a lower gutter. Our recommendation, we're going to call this out as a defect. Um, this should extend all the way down and drain directly into the gutter below it. Um, gutters, you know, what happens is uh, water will, especially when it rains heavily, water will come down, overflow the gutters, uh, hit the side, get underneath behind the gutters, potentially if they're not flashed properly, get in behind your siding and then uh, into your walls in your house or they'll drain down along the outside of the siding and, and you know, it'll eventually work your way down into build hydrostatic pressure against your foundation. Um, so, so improperly delayed maintenance and repairs. So here's what we're calling out would be a tripping hazard. You know, it's got a, the concrete panels have heaved or settled um, during the freeze-thaw cycle and has created a trip hazard. And so nowadays they've, they have a great system. They can come in, drill a few holes in this lower lower concrete pad and at its level and seal them up. And it's, it's relatively inexpensive and you know it doesn't look that bad when they're done. Uh, you know, here's rusted components. This is an electrical uh, circuit breaker for the air conditioner. It's all rusted. And then in here, uh, one over here on the right is just a dirty air filter for a furnace. Okay, so plumbing systems includes fuel. So here we got a, um, you know, a gas meter that has been damaged. Um, Septic well, sewer water, so plumbing systems. You know, you get a lot of um, water heated is an older, see a lot of older water heaters. Um, so we'll, we'll make a note of that and just say, hey, it's it's near the end of its useful life or it's exceeded its, it's uh, estimated useful life. Um, this here is an S-trap, which allows, uh, there should always be traps, there should always be water in this trap to prevent sewer gases from coming back up and into the home. And when they put these S traps on, uh, so normally the P trap would come here and extend directly into the wall. When you put this S trap on, it siphon, it has a tendency to siphon out this water seal here, which allows um, fumes to enter the house. And that's a relatively easy fix, but we'll, we'll call that out as, you know, a maintenance, a maintenance item. All right, so here's what we're talking about as far as talking about earlier, as far as uh, electrical, unsafe electrical panels. Um, Federal Pacific is the one that I had in my house, which is, you know, it, you know, it should say on the either outside or inside, but you can really tell by these stab block breakers, which is they got these red, they're red at the very end of these breakers. And it pretty much says stab block right here. So if you see those, you know, that's a, that's, 
home inspectors are going to call that out as being defective. Um, and the reason B is some of these circuit breakers fail to trip when there's a short circuit or circuit overload. Um, so it's a fire hazard. Um, and the power sometimes wouldn't shut off when you shut the breaker off or the breakers would pop out. Zinsco, uh, you could tell these obviously by the name here, but they got these multicolor breakers in here. And that's one way to, to tell that if the tag is a label is somehow not legible. Um, fuse boxes, um, they're, we kind of, we'll call them out, um, especially if these fuses are, like I said, is an older system. I mean, they work, but people have a tendency to overfuse them. So if this is a 15 amp fuse, they may put a 20 amp fuse in because it keeps blowing. Um, but it should only be a 15 amp fuse. Or sometimes the olden days, people used to put pennies or quarters or whatever it was in there that could fit to, so that these wouldn't blow. They have they have um, special fuses nowadays that are rejection based fuses, so that you can only put in the correct fuse for those. And those are called S type fuses. Um, so at the very least, you would we would recommend that they use S type fuses, not the T type fuses. Um, Okay, so that's kind of it on electrical panels. So let me, I was going to show you a sample report here. Hopefully. Okay, so can you see uh, can you see this report now? You can't see the inspection report. Okay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna unstop sharing and share this page now. Let's see. Share screen. Share. How about now? Yep. Okay. <clears throat> so here's a sample. Here's a sample inspection um, that I. That I with the software that I use, and I'll give um, so I kind of have a summary and a full report. All right, and so this is kind of what it'll look like. I do blue for maintenance, and we're talking about I'll do this orange slash yellow for moderate concern, and then have um, red for significant issues or safety hazards. So trip hazards, uh, missing hand railing and balusters on steps, um, GFCI outlets. Um, you know, here we talk about siding is damaged, water can get in there. Um, let's see. This is the roof coverings, flashings, roof drainage systems got debris in it. Recommend a chimney cap. Um, Chimneys, bricks are spalling, um, missing mortar. Okay. Bound, here's here we got some of the, these are some of the cracks that we were talking about earlier in the basement where you have efflorescence observed. Well, that's efflorescence is pretty much just the mineral, the, the minerals, the, the, the built, the bricks, the blocks or bricks or whatever. Uh, absorb the moisture and in that moisture and in the bricks, those mineral minerals, and that uh, is what is coming up there. And that's just an indication that there is excess moisture there. Um, and it's something that you periodically would clean off and monitor, make sure that that doesn't keep happening. Um, and these are some of the cracks we were talking about before. Um, damaged wood, this was where it was wood rot, um, moisture intrusion and wood rot at the ceiling joist. So I just wanted to show you, um, you know, what a typical report, this is, so this is what a, this is what a full report would look like, you know, and, you know, where we talk about, we have a cover page, 
we'd have a recap. Okay, I got 19 maintenance items, 14 moderate concern items, 11 material uh, safety material items. And it kind of goes through, tells you what the inspection details were, and then it goes by the various components. And, you know, we were talking before, you know, what type of materials they were, the roof, what kind of style they were, and then all the various pictures. So there's going to be many more pictures in there than what, you know, go into a defect report just to show the various condition of, you know, the exterior um, information here. Uh, then if there was any limitations. And then, you know, I, I spoke to you before about the standards of practice. That's what's on this tab. It tells what, what we talk about what is part of a home inspection or what is not part of a home inspection, just so there's no misunderstanding about that. Um, all right, so this is kind of what the, the software that I use and it's got the various components over here and, um, you know, so I just wanted to show, I didn't want to take the time to show you that. Um, so I'm gonna stop sharing that, go back to the presentation. Let's see, start sh share screen. There it is. All right, so um, I think that's pretty much it. So, Free negligent referral. So, so Internachi, I just want to show you. So Internachi shows a free negligent referral protection for real estate agents. So Internachi, which is the, the professional homeowners, um, home inspectors association that I'm certified by and uh, a member of, they have a um, program so that you get indemnified up to $10,000 if a third party successfully sues the agent for negligent referral of a uh, internachi inspector uh it's offered at no cost to the agents you know this is two agents who register so you just pretty much have to go register and there's a link in this in this uh deck that um so it's uh, when i send the deck out to you that that will be in there it's a nice thing to it's no cost to you and it's not not a bad thing to have um and it encourages uh real estate agents to use internachi inspectors uh, so thank you very much for um Sitting through this boring presentation, I would guess. Hopefully you learned something. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to give me a call. Uh, my information is here and it will also be in the, the email I send out to you. Um, so I, I, hope you, I hope you learned something. Also, also, so we do offer discounts for military first responders and healthcare professionals. So, um, you know, just keep that in mind too. Um, so does anybody have any questions at all? Everybody good? Okay. Well, I'm not sure if Danielle's still here, if I just end this or what's supposed to happen. Um, I would guess I'm going to drop off and then I don't know what Danielle's going to do for the rest of you guys. So I really appreciate the opportunity. Um, keep me in mind if you're creating a, a, your, your standard list of uh, real uh, uh, inspectors out there to keep me in mind and uh, would appreciate you putting me on your list if possible. Uh, got any questions, give me a call. And thank you very much. Have a great thank day. You. Thank you, Rich. You okay. Too. Sure. Bye-bye.